Good day. You are listening to Yashua Radio with your host, Leon Mashay. Welcome to Torah Talk. Today we will start with a new series and the focus will be on the end times. What does the Torah, the word of Elohim, say about these days? Abba Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord, our Master, Yahshua Mashiach, and ask that your love will surround us. Ruach Ha, may reveal yourself to us, guide us in your truth. Please help us to understand what Yahshua said about things to come and what you said through your servants, the prophets. Please give us a spirit of discernment to identify the truth and to reject the lies. Write your truth on our hearts as we reject the teachings of men and devils. Thank you, Father. Amen. When we listen to a teaching about the Bible and immediately reject it, or when we have a fixed way of understanding scriptures, it is not always good. It could be a spirit of pride or a religious spirit. Only God is true and knows all truth. We need to be true seekers, or we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. Let's start with a well-known part from Matthew 24. Many books are written on this topic. Let us call the spirit of truth to interpret to us what Yahshua said. John 16, 13, and that's why we ask the spirit of truth to help us, the Holy Spirit. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he shall guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but whatever he hears, he shall speak, and he shall announce to you what is to come. Matthew 24, verse 1. And going out, Yahshua went away from the set-apart place, and his taught ones came near to point out to him the buildings of the set-apart place. And Yahshua said to them, Do you see all these? Truly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another at all, which shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the thought ones came to him separately, saying, Say to us, When shall this be? What is the sign of your coming? and of the end of the age. Three questions are asked. First question, when shall this be? That's the part regarding the temple, the set-apart place, and the stones that will be thrown down. Referring, therefore, to the destruction of the set-apart place. And when shall the sign of your coming what is the sign of your coming? Third question, and the end of the age. Normally people take the answer of Yahshua and put it into one box. But there were three questions asked. Therefore, the answers will be given. Matthew 24, verse 4. And Yahshua answering said to them, Take ye that no one leads you astray. We start off with a warning of deception. And how will they do that? How will they deceive the people? For many shall come in my name, Matthew 24 verse 5, saying, I am the Messiah, and they shall lead many astray. Now, there are different interpretations of this part. First of all, there will be preachers and teachers saying that Yahshua, Jesus, is the Christ. Yahshua is the Messiah. 
and being pastors and leaders in churches, they will lead people astray. They will give them false teachings, proclaiming Jesus is the Christ. The other interpretation is that specifically at the end of the time, end of the days, there will be people pro proclaiming that they are the Messiah. Teachers and preachers confessing that Yahshua was the Messiah, but with their teachings, they will lead many astray. Or people proclaiming that they are the Messiah. Therefore, they are led the spirit of the anti-Messiah, the Antichrist. Matthew 24, verse 6. And you shall begin to hear of fightings and reports of fight. See that you are not troubled. For these have to take place, but the end is not yet. There will be wars and rumors of war. Verse 7, verse 7. For nations shall rise against nations. Continental fights, countries fighting with one another, and reigns against reign. Ethnic fightings within a country, groups fighting one another. And there shall be scarcity of thrones and deadly disease and earthquake and in various places. And all these are the beginning of birth pains. So it's not the end yet. It's not the middle yet. It's only the beginning. During this time, many false prophets will rise. Matthew 24, verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise up and lead many astray. What is a false prophet? He's a person that's not teaching the truth. Teaching interpretations, revelations of Scripture that is not supported and not Guided by the word of God itself, it's the interpretation of scripture. Verse 12, Matthew 24. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many shall become cold. There's a typical example of false prophets. Teachers and preachers proclaiming that by one or other reason, you don't have to obey the law anymore. The law, the Torah has done away with her, done on your behalf or whatever excuse. That's false prophets because it's not scriptural. And because there will be lawlessness, the love for many shall become cold. Matthew 24 verse 30. But he who shall have endeared to the end shall be um, saved. When will you be saved? In the beginning of this time, in the middle of this time, or the end? Well, ever endears to the end shall be saved. Matthew 24, verse 40. And this good news of the reign of the kingdom of Yahshua shall be proclaimed in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end shall come. Matthew 24 verse 15. So when you see the abomination that lays waste, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, set up in the set apart place. Remember the question started after they show Yahshua the set apart place, the temple. So this abomination will be in the temple of God. He who reads, let him understand. Did this happen already? There are people that suggest that it happened in 70 AD after the temple were destroyed. I cannot agree with that. I don't think so. This is the reason why. Look at Yahshua's words. Look at the red block. He who reads, 
let him understand. Who reads what? Who read this prophecy of Yahshua. By 70 AD, this prophecy, the words was not written yet, was not in a book form yet, was not in a Bible yet. Matthew did not send these prophecies to the rest of the world. So let him who reads understand. So that's definitely for a later date than 70 AD. Now, when this abomination is in the temple, Matthew 24, verse 16, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Specific instruction for the people living in the land Israel, in Judea. Let him who is on the housetop not come down to take whatever out of his house. And let him who is in the field not turn back to get his garment. There's now no time to gather food, to gather clothing, to gather whatever you think you need. You must flee immediately. And woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing children in those days. Why? Because the tribulation will be so great, it's already tough when you're pregnant and you need to go from one place to another. Now you must flee in a hurry. There will be no food for babies. It will be difficult times for the mothers and the babies, even for adult men. Strong men will suffer during this time of the great tribulation. Then Yahshua continued the prophecy, saying, And pray that your flight does not take place in winter. Why not? Remember, you don't have time to get your garment. You don't have time to get warm clothing. You must flee immediately. So you are not prepared to withstand the cold conditions. Or on the Shabbat. The Shabbat? Why would Yeshua say the Shabbat? Didn't Jesus know that the Shabbat he done away with? No, that's false teachers proclaiming that. Yeshua and Father want us to keep the Shabbat day holy. And we are not allowed to work. Some people interpret it even you're not allowed to fight on Shabbat to do war on Shabbat. You're not allowed to flee even on Shabbat because it's work. So pray that your flight will not take place on a Shabbat day, Friday night to Saturday night. Matthew 24 verse 21. For then there shall be great distress such as had not been since the beginning of the world until this time no one sorry no nor even shall be this is the great tribulation take note yashua is speaking to believers not unbelievers believers that are pregnant and have small babies must also flee in a hurry during the great tribulation. And that's Yahshua speaking. He's explaining to us what will happen during the time of distress. He explained to us what will happen during the end of days. Matthew 24, 22. And if those days, the great tribulation days, were not shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the sake of the chosen, the believers, the Christian, the Messianic believers, those days shall be shortened because the believers must go through that great tribulation. And Yahshua said, because you must go through that, I will shorten those days. Verse 23. If anyone then during this time of distress say to you, look, there's the Messiah. In other words, look, he's coming. 
He's taking us to the in the clouds. He's coming. He's in the desert. He's in the closet, the prayer closet. Do not believe it. If anyone say to you anything that differs from Yahshua's words, he is the one that Yahshua is warning us against, and that is the false prophets that will arise. Say Yahshua is the Messiah, but they will lead many astray. Again, that warning for false messiahs and false prophets shall arise, and they shall show great signs and wonders and so as to let astray if possible even the chosen ones false messiahs will not only speak nor they will have power to do great signs and misleading wonders in only a couple of verses Yahshua warned us for the third time about the false prophets that will arise and lead people astray. Matthew 24, 25. See, I have forewarned you. So if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go. Or look, he is in the inner room, do not believe. Will there be silent? Will there be a secret coming? Doesn't look like that. Matthew 24 27. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines to the west, so also shall the coming of the Son of Adam. This is not the second coming yet. In other words, Yahshua say to us, if they tell you he's in the secret, he's in the closet, he's in the desert. He's hiding somewhere. That's Yahshua. Do not believe them. For when Yahshua comes, it will be as lightning strikes. Everybody will see that. Matthew 24, 28. For wherever the dead body is, there the eagles, the birds of prey, shall be gathered together. So what Yahshua is saying, during that time, there will be a lot of dead bodies. And immediately after the distress of those days, immediately after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give its light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then after the great tribulation, the sign of the son of Adam shall appear in the heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn, because everybody will see him. And they shall see the son of Adam coming on the clouds of the heaven with power and much esteem. Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his messengers, his angels, with a great sound of the trumpet, not a silent coming. And they shall gather together the chosen, the believers, the Christians, the Messianic believers, those that went through the great tribulation. His chosen ones from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Now, Yahshua will say, learn from this parable, Matthew 24, 32. And learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches has already become tender and put off the leaves, you know the summer is near. So, you also, when you see all the, all the, not one, not only wars, not the rumors of wars, not only pestilences, not only a shortage, scarcities of food, all these things. The great tribulation, all that's written in the revelation come down on the earth, the judgment of Yahweh. 
when you see all these, know that he is near at the doors. Truly I say to you, this generation shall by no means pass away until all this takes place. There's a lot of speculation what this generation means. Clearly, it's not the generation that stood before Yahshua when he gave this prophecy. It could refer to a generation of unbelievers. So they will even be unbelievers when Yahshua came back. Matthew 24, 35. The heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my word shall by no means pass away. So Yahshua said, Jesus telling us, all that I said will happen as I said it. The heaven and the earth will pass away, but not to these words that I spoke. So Yahshua said, when you see the abomination that Daniel spoke about, standing in the set apart place, now you need to flee. This is the starting point of the great tribulation. Then all believers, need to listen to the Spirit of God and do what the Spirit of truth is telling them to do. Those that live in Israel, Yodaya, need to flee immediately to the mountains. They must get out of the cities. Then the great tribulation will start and the Spirit will lead us through the great tribulation. And at the end of the great tribulation, when Yahshua, when Jesus is coming back, he will send his angels off with a loud sound of the trumpet and the angels, the messengers will gather all the believers from the four winds of the earth. Yahshua's own words. We cannot add, we can't take away. Matthew 24, 36. But concerning that day and that our no 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 one knows not even the messengers of the heavens but my father only what day what hour well what was the question Yahshua already explained the tribulation and after the tribulation he will gather all people what was the other question the other question was the sign of the end of the age, the end of the world as we know it. When will this earth pass away? When will this heaven stop to exist? Now Yahshua continue explaining the signs of his second coming. Matthew 24, 37. As, as the days of Noah so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as they were in the days before the flood, eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah enters into the ark, and they did not know until the flood came and took them away, so also shall the coming of the Son of Adam be. What do you think could be the reason that we are not allowed to know when Yahshua is coming back? What will the reason be? I cannot think of any logic reason. Let's call Paul to testify on his interpretation of this event, the second coming. 1 Thessalonians 5, 1. Now, brothers, as the times and the seasons, you do not need to be written to. Why not? They know exactly the time and the season because the prophets foretold us when Yahshua will come back and Yahshua himself told us as well for you yourself know very well that the day of Yahweh comes as a thief in the night for when they say peace and safety then a sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. They or you, they is the heathens, they are the unbelievers. You will know, but they will not know. 
But you, brothers, are not in the darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. They will not know, but you will know. We, the believers, will know of the day when Yahshua is coming. Do these verses, Jesus' own words, describe, for instance, a rapture, or does it refer to what Yahshua already explained in Matthew 24, 31? What is God saying? Amos 37, for the master Yahweh, does no matter unless he reveals in secret to his servants the prophets. So in the prophets, we will read about Yahshua's second coming and what will happen. Yahshua himself is a prophet as well, the prophet, and he prophesies about his second coming, prophesy when the temple will be destroyed, what will happen there, and he's also telling us no man knows the day of the hour when the end of the age will be. Now let's look at the words again of Yahshua in the prophecy, Matthew 24, 31. And he shall send his messengers with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his chosen ones from the one, the four winds, from the one end of the heavens to the other. So Yahshua said they will gather all the believers together. From Matthew 24, and then we can read verses 43 to 51. Yahshua said, be ready at all times for the hour, not the day, the hour of his coming may surprise you. Abba, we thank you for this opportunity and if your spirit that leads us truth and will reveal to us the words of Yahshua, our master, so that we will understand the end of times, we understand what will happen soon as we are in those days, so that we will wait on you, that we will focus on our own lives and to ask you to guide us in your truth, to cleanse us with the precious blood of Yahshua, Jesus, our Messiah. We thank you, Father. Oh, man.